I'm going to tell you a story about something that happened to me when I was 15 years old that uh, was a crossroad in my life. I want to tell the story because I want to use it as an illustration to what happened to Daniel. We got a hurricane coming this way, so I want to get this off before uh, we lose the internet or anything. Uh, this is probably uh, so important for teenagers to hear this, or young people, even older people, because what we're going to learn here is the secret to Daniel's success even though he was in captivity and taken far away from home. Growing up, my father was a high achiever. Okay, He graduated valedictorium, uh, was a really good athlete, uh, could speak numerous languages. Uh, his father was from Barcelona, Spain. His mother was what they call a mestizo. She was half Indian and half Spanish. My father did really well growing up, except when he drank. My father would drink whiskey. And when he drank whiskey, he would become a different person. It, he would only have to drink one shot and his words would begin to slur. Well, growing up witnessing this, I, I, I saw him say and do things that were totally out of character to him. And frankly, I hated it. I hated the way he talked. I hated the way he acted. But I never saw him growing up with a hangover. He would change from day to night. But anyway, growing up, I swore I would never, ever drink because I didn't want to be that way and display the kind of uh, behavior that my dad did when he drank until one day. In 1966, uh, we were living in Italy. My father was involved in intelligence uh, with the U.S. Army. And for reason to this day, I don't know, I tried to find out many, many times, but my mom and my dad would not tell me. My father came home and he told me that we were going to go, just me and him, to Germany on a, on a, on a military aircraft. Uh, we went there and when I was, before Italy, I was in France, I was very much involved in sports, I played uh, uh, on an All-France baseball all-star team, we ended up winning All-France, we ended up going to uh, the Netherlands to play in for the European Championship. Well, there was a, a, a one of my teammates was uh, now living in Germany, uh, and my father was going to go stay at his house, and he took me with him because uh, his father was involved in intelligence as well. Well, so me and my dad there at my friend's house, and my dad and his dad went out somewhere, I don't know where to this day. And my friend said, let's go to town. And so I went to town with him and he took a girl with him. And we went in a bar and my friend said to me if I wanted a beer. Now, beer in the United States is one thing. Dark beer in Germany is another thing. And I kind of hesitated and all that, but I didn't want to embarrass my friend. And, you know, there was this girl right there. And I had many other times before I have resisted and all that. But I was away from home. I was away from my normal environment. I was in a different place. I felt the peer pressure and all that. So I said, okay. I literally <laughs> got inebriated. I barely remember that evening, but I do know that when we came back to Italy, I now had a taste for alcohol and I started hanging out with all the jocks and drinking and doing all that. I had a lot of character when I went to Germany. I was very self-motivated to achieve and especially in sports and I was extremely disciplined. I was a leader. I was always captain of my teams and everything. 
But after I was drinking, everything began to change because I started to see life differently and things happened to me that I regret uh, greatly. Okay, why do I tell you that story? Because a similar thing happened to Daniel. You see in this chart here, and I want to make a contrast between what happened with me and how come I gave in and why Daniel did not give in. Although I had character, and I'm going to explain that to you, and I was driven, it's not the same thing that what Daniel had. Okay. Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem. And he told one of his officials, I want you to bring back some sons of nobility. Okay, not just ordinary teens, but ones that were the offsprings of people that were noble in Jerusalem. They had to be teens. They had to be handsome without any kind of physical defect. They had to be strong. And they had to be smart, capable of learning, not just head knowledge, but a lot of street smart too. Okay? And he wanted these teens, these young people, because he wanted to indoctrinate them. And he was going to do this by taking them a thousand miles away from his home, by giving them a new language from Hebrew to Chaldean, by giving them a new dependence, he was going to take their independence away from them and make them totally dependent on him and his government. Okay? And he's going to give them a new name. He's going to give them names that are resembling of their gods. Basically, what Nebuchadnezzar wants to do with these young, noble teens that were handsome and smart was give them a new identity. At least that's what he planned. That's what Nebuchadnezzar wanted. Okay, let me tell you what he got. Daniel and his friends were born during the time of Josiah. Josiah was one of the good kings of Judah. Okay, they also were contemporaries of Jeremiah and Ezekiel. They they, those were prophets that would teach these young people about the things of God, the ordinances of God. They were good Bible students. They understood God's plan and God's purpose for them. Okay? Now, what's the difference between Christian character and character? That's what I want to show you. I had character. What you call the modus operandi or lust drives. Why did I excel the way I did? Why did my father excel the way he did? It's because there's different things. Sometimes people do it for power. Some people do it for prestige, recognition. Some people do it for praise. They want their father's praise, their parents' praise, their friends' praise. They want the world's praise. Some people do it for pride. You know, you see a lot of that in sports today, especially with the young people. Some people do it out of peer pressure, like what I did when I was up in Germany. Okay? And some people do it for money, for profit. There's a lot of reasons that people, you know the Boy Scouts, and they try to develop and put in you character. What you don't know is the modus operandi. What is the motivation moving them to do and excel what they're doing? There's nothing wrong with these things in and of themselves. But that's not what Daniel had. Daniel had Christian character. This I did not have when I went to Germany. I didn't even know what it was. How I wish I'd have had it. What a different life I could have led. But I have an understanding of something now that gets me by. Okay, so let me explain this to you. Christian character... It's moxie. It's free from these things. You're not driven by those things. It's a conviction to a divine viewpoint in the inner man. Okay? So you're born again. You believe that God is looking through and full 
throughout the world to support those, as the Bible says in the Old Testament, those who trust in him. Daniel and his friends believed that. God was unseen hand of God to support those who trust in him. They were they had a deep conviction in the heart, in the inner man, that God was going to support them no matter what the circumstances. As you'll see as we go through, uh, uh, and when they were in the lungs then, and when they were in the fiery furnace, and the things that they told Nebuchadnezzar, even if God doesn't rescue us, we want you to know we're not going to bow down to you or your gods. They were able to defy and stand strong, not in their strength, not in their character, but because they wanted to be pleasing to God. And they knew in the deepest recesses of their heart that God would rescue them if it's his will, but he wants to help those who trust in him and him alone. Now let me ask you something. What if I had gone to Germany when I did, and I had that understanding of God, okay, and that I wanted to be pleasing to God, I wouldn't have, first, I would not have done that. I would have just sat there with him, talked to him, and all that, but I would have had something driving me within to say no. A lot of young people today are getting involved in a lot of things. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on TikTok, there's a lot of stuff on. Uh, WhatsApp that they do now and, and, and on the internet and they fall into trends and they get tempted and a lot of temptation out there and they don't know how to say no because they don't understand or they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and they haven't learned to be pleasing to Him. When you want to be pleasing to God, oh, how I wish I'd have had that, had, you, had, had I had known that. Had you wanted to be pleasing to God, it overrides every other kind of thing that could drive you. Okay, What drives you? What is your modus operandi? What caused you to get up today and go to work? What is the thing you trust? I, tell you, I go to bed at night and, and, and it's so easy to go to sleep when I just say, God is looking all around the world for those who trust him so he can support them. And I lay there and I think, God, I believe that you're going to work everything out according to your will in my life. No matter what circumstance I'm put in. And I get tried, and those of you who have been with me for a number of years know that I have gone through a lot of different circumstances. And, and, and I'm going through other ones that you don't know about, okay? And, and I don't like to make those things public with everybody. But I trust God. I trust Him that He's going to rescue me and take me the same way He did Daniel the same way he did the Apostle Paul. Think about the Apostle Paul when he was persecuting the church, okay, and throwing in his towel for, and his vote for Stephen to be martyred. What drove him to do that? Was it his pride as a Pharisee? Was it the fact that he didn't want to lose the power that he had as a leader of a Pharisee or the prestige that he had? What drove him? What changed him is when he met the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he was motivated in a whole different way. And then he saw God's hand rescue him from shipwrecks, from beating, from prison. The same way God did Daniel. Let me tell you something. We're just getting started in this book. I'm going to go through chapter 1 again. And we're going to go verse by verse by verse. But I wanted you to kind of get an idea of what Daniel was like. He was a contemporary to Jeremiah and Ezekiel. He had the right kind of friends that honored God the way he did. 
He had the right kind of peer pressure. He didn't hang with the wrong crowd. And he was able to stand strong and God elevated him. He was able to defy the king. And you get our government coming and asking you to do things that you know that God doesn't want you to do. You're able to stand strong no matter what the consequences because you know, you know in the deep recesses of your heart, and I'm going to talk about that next time, that God delights in rescuing and supporting those who trust in him. Stay tuned with me. Uh, listen, share this with other people. I thank you for uh, your support. Uh, God bless you. I hope this has been meaningful to you as it has to me.